Hey, what's up? This is Reed. Recently, I did a video on smart things and I just touched on WebCore, but a lot of you commented how you wanted to know more about WebCore. So thank you so much for your feedback. I read all of your questions. And so today's video is going to take you from, I don't really know much about WebCore to, I feel pretty comfortable using it now by the end of this video. There are a few reasons why automating a web core is better than just using the SmartThings app. First, you can add more advanced logic for when automation should run using web core. I'll explain by giving you an example. I have a motion sensor that turns on my kitchen lights when I'm walking towards the kitchen, and it automatically turns off the lights if there's no motion. But say I'm cooking and I'm not moving around much, I don't want the lights to turn off automatically while I'm mid cooking. And so I can manually override that using web core. I can have the motion sensor turn on the lights to 98% brightness. If I hold up the dimmer switch, it will turn up to 100% brightness. And when there's no motion, if it's at 100% brightness, it won't automatically turn off the lights. So that's pretty easy to do in WebCore, and I don't think I can do that in SmartThings. You can also get WebCore to send and receive if, if this and that commands. You can get your automations to work together with variables. You can have things run synchronously or asynchronously. You can just really dial in your automations to work the way you want them to. Now let's go over those things by talking about the ins and outs of WebCore, and I'll give you some specific examples on how you can implement it. If you don't already have WebCore installed, you can add it by adding the WebCore Smart App in SmartThings, and I'll link to the video on how to install it down in the description, and once you install it, you can add all the devices in SmartThings into WebCore. Once it's installed, the first thing you'll want to do is create a piston to automate something. To start off, I would enable the first four toggles that give you extra functionality when editing the piston. You can disable them if you think it's too distracting, but I think it's helpful, especially if you're looking at an example online and you want to know how they did certain things. The first thing you'd probably want to add is an if block. And this is like, if something happens, then do something. So if a motion sensor senses motion, then turn on the light. And you can have it do multiple things for the if statement. So if it senses motion and it's at night and you're home, then turn on the light. And you can get a little more complicated with an else if it senses motion and it's at night and you're not home, then send yourself a push notification. In the then section, you'll want it to do an action. And so you'll select the action block. And this can change a physical device like turning a light on. But if you wanted to do something else that doesn't involve a physical device, then leave it as default as location. And this kind of tripped me up because sometimes I wanted to change something else and I didn't know what to do. Just leave it as location and then you can have it change other things. And the next thing is variables. And local variables are something that you can give a value to like a true or false. And that can just live only in the piston. So it's not shared with other pistons. That is a global variable, and you can share that with other pistons. There's also device variables. So if you wanna have multiple lights and give it one name, so that that way when you're doing a lot of different automations with all of those lights, you can just reference that one device name and save yourself some time. I'll explain how to use variables with an example I use with a motion sensor and a light. And motion sensor and light can be a little annoying because sometimes the light turns off too fast or it takes too long to turn off the light. I made it so if I walk into the room and I'm in the room for less than a minute and I walk out, so I'm just quickly grabbing something and leaving, the light will automatically turn off after 10 seconds of no motion if it's been under a minute. But if I've been in the room for over a minute, it'll take five minutes to turn off the light. So that way it's not automatically turning off the light when I'm in the room. So I did that with a local variable. And if it's been over a minute, it sets that variable to true. And when it goes to turn off the light, it checks for that variable if it's set. And if it is, it won't automatically turn off the light until five minutes. I'll share this piston with you guys that you can import yourselves and I'll show you how to do that. One thing to note is the properties at the top right. If you select a block, the default is to run synchronously. So it will run step by step. So if it has a wait time, it will wait before it runs the next step. But if you change it to run asynchronously, then it will run all the steps at the same time. Another thing that's useful is logs. And once you save the piston, you can enable the logs. I can also write to the logs in the piston, and that way I can ensure that certain things are happening. And I use this to kind of debug things and make sure things are working correctly. Now that you know how pistons work, I wanna show you a few more things using WebCore. With if this and that, you can have it send or receive if commands. And the reason why you might want it to receive an if command is that you might wanna use your favorite voice assistant to trigger a piston. You can set that up in WebCore by using an if block 
and then selecting virtual device and then selecting if executes value just type in whatever you want just whatever command and you'll see it generates a url then you open up the if application and you can select create a new applet and select google assistant or alexa depending on which one you want to use then webhooks and that's where you paste in the url that it just generated in webcore and then i just changed mine to application json and so when you use that command or whatever you want to say to like google assistant it will trigger that piston in webcore if you want webcore to send if commands you'll need to go into the settings in webcore and go to integrations follow the steps there and it will have you generate a maker URL and you'll paste that in there and hit apply down at the bottom. If you wanted to send an if command in WebCore, select an action block in WebCore and then leave it as location, remember what we talked about, and then select send an if maker event. In the value, you can put whatever you want. I usually don't put spaces here, I'll use underscores so that there's no issues. Now to make it do something in the if app for if, use webhooks and put in that event name, what you just put is that value, and then you can have it do something like turn on a light or whatever you want it to do. Another thing that you can do with WebCore, and I got this idea from Taylor Tech, who did a video on WebCore, so shout out to him, is that you can have an outlet that monitors how much energy it's using, and you can hook that up to a washing machine. When it drops below a certain wattage, so the washing machine's done, it can send you a push notification. If you wanna share a piston that you've created, you can select the green camera button, and what that will do is it will generate a little unique code, and it will change all the device names to generic names, so it won't invade your privacy. If someone wants to import that piston, or if you wanna import a piston from an example that you found online, then go to WebCore and click on New Piston. Then select Restore a Piston Using a Backup Code. Then enter in that code and it will automatically import that piston. The last two things I wanted to talk about are fuel streams and dashboard. And fuel streams will graph out your data and you can push that from your piston. You can write to the fuel stream on like data points such as like temperature of sensors. I wasn't able to get this to work. Online people are saying that the servers might be overloaded. I enabled all the things in the settings and so hopefully this will work in the future. The dashboard is like a snapshot of all your devices and sensors. It will show you the battery percentage and what the temperature is. You can't toggle anything here, but it just looks good. It's been fun to see all the different possibilities that you can do with WebCore and I'll be making more videos on different automation ideas in the future. So subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.